Hey everyone, um, quick live. There's that much going on right now. I don't have time to actually put it all in one video. So, I mean, I have to put it all in one video. There's just that much stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly cover this right now. There's a few things on right now. I'm just gonna wait for some people to get in. Massive news out of America. Um, I caught, got up to date on where things are going with the US election over there. That's coming up on the uh, 8th of November, which is the 9th of November for Australia. Um, I also got in touch with um, what's been going on in Australia. There's some massive stories coming out, which we need to be across um, because very soon they'll be right on our tail with a lot of these things. And um, just a few things with censorship I want to catch you guys up on. Okay, so 100, 100 of you listening right now. Give this a share. Get it out there. I've got a lot to catch you up on. As I said before, I'm very busy. I don't have a lot of time to make a video for each of these six or seven different topics. Um, and so I need to get this to you guys right now because it's actually quite time sensitive. Um, Mark McGowan, Premier of Western Australia, he's basically, um, ch he changed the rules without telling it anyone. He did it covertly at like 1 a.m. in the morning. He's changed the rules so that parties are having, minor parties particularly, conviction parties, they're going to be restricted in, t in terms of how many of them can actually run. It's very similar to what happened federally, if you guys remember uh, when Scott Morrison passed that bill. They need members, basically. So look, if you're in WA and you're listening right now, go sign up to your favorite Freedom Party, whatever it is. You know, I, I know One Nation's over there, uh, a number of the other parties are over there, I think the UAP's over there. If you're in WA, you, it looks like your party might be deregistered very soon if you don't go sign up to that party. All right, I'm gonna move on from that. Victorian elections, um, oh my God. There's so much to do. There's that, there's that many things going on in Victoria. It's absolutely insane. Um, the volunteer funnel, going very well. Um, the amount of people that are finding that funnel useful. I think in the first 24 hours, we've got about 100 people uh, go through the Turning Point Australia funnel, which basically sends people to volunteer for different parties. That's great. Um, Red Wave. Oh, my gosh. So I caught up on what's going on in America. Absolutely insane what's going on. There's There's something like... Um, a 54-seat majority in the Senate that the Republicans are on track for right now. If you're listening in right now, there's 300 of you listening live right now. Give this a share. Get it out there. If 300 of you share it, that's over 10,000 views uh, for people out there. It looks like they're going to have a massive red wave over there, and I'm really excited to see it. I mean, we're all, we're all here for it, aren't we? Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing them not only get the House, the majority in the lower house where Nancy Pelosi is, but I'm also excited to see what happens in the Senate, the upper house. If they manage to get a majority, then it's going to be like a lame duck session for uh, Joe Biden. He can't get anything else passed. He can't do anything, you know, in terms of um, uh, legislation with inflation. Um, if they get a super majority, so there's 100 senators, that's two senators for each state. If they get a super majority, which is two thirds, 66 senators, if they wanted to... <laughs> If they wanted to, they could actually impeach and remove the president. In order to impeach the president, there obviously has to be corruption charges brought forward. And if they actually end up impeaching the president, that's the lower house of Congress um, voting in a majority to basically impeach him and also the vice president if they want. But they, if they have a two-thirds majority in the upper house, 66 senators, then they can remove the parliamentarian, they can, sorry, they can remove the president and even the vice president if they want. And then the next person in line to be the, the president would be the Speaker of the House, uh, which would both, both most likely be um, a Republican. And so I'm looking at what's going on here and I'm like, wow, this is insane. I don't think they'll get 66 Senate spots. That would be extraordinary. Um, but who knows, maybe the evidence and the investigations they do with their majority is so overwhelming that even Democrats end up voting for it. So look, I don't know. I have no idea. That's, um, that red wave is looking very interesting, some of the polling that's been going on there. Um, in other news, going back to um, uh, Australia, Alan Jones just broke this massive story, I think yesterday or this last week. Um, in the budget, something we missed, well, I missed at least anyway, they, the, the, the Labor government is giving a tax-deductible status to an Aboriginal organization called Indigenous Constitutional Recognition. So they're making it tax deductible. So all of those millionaires and billionaires that want to donate to 
give Australia a voice to the parliament, essentially, you know, a blank check so that the government can subvert the constitution and empower this Aboriginal voice to the parliament. What it's going to, what they're doing is they're giving this organization, Indigenous Constitutional Recognition, that's the name of it, um, Australians for Indigenous Constitutional Recognition, a tax deductible status. That means a lot more people will donate to them. It'll give them um, an ability to actually um, fight a better campaign. They have that tax deductible status from July this year to July 2025 uh, or January 2025. That's insane. That's absolutely crazy. There's nothing like that for the no campaign for the um, the voice of the parliament. And I'm sure, you know, the 400 of you listening live right now would, would agree that, you know, why, why isn't it fair? Um, if you haven't seen the Alan Jones segment, I'll try and share it. It's really good. If you want to find the specific line on this, it's in the budget paper, paper two, page 17. And it reads, the government will amend the tax law to specifically list Australians for Indigenous constitutional recognition as a deductible gift recipient, DGR, for donations made from the 1st of July 2022 to the 30th of June 2025. So that's clarified there. Insane. That means that it's not a fair fight, basically, with that. So that means we're going to fight harder than ever before it, when, when the vote comes up. And in that segment, Alan Jones had a, had a guest which came on and basically made the point that probably uh, late 2023, we might see a situation where we have that kind of debate. They're already pouring millions of dollars, the Labor government, um, into getting people prepared for that kind of debate and that kind of referendum. So there's a lot, there's a lot to do there, guys. It's going to be absolutely insane. And that's, that's not the most of it. They've got more coming. Elections have consequences. This is what happens when Labor gets in. Um, it doesn't mean we can't stop it. I think this could be a Brexit moment if we nip this in the bud. I think we can very much do so. In other news, jumping over to Elon Musk. Yes, Elon Musk is not doing a good job on Twitter. Um, obviously, he's been there for about two seconds. I've been listening to Tim Pool a lot speak on this. If you haven't followed Tim Pool, he's excellent. Um, Elon's not doing enough on censorship. Um, my, my account's still personally um, heavily shadow banned still, so nothing's changed there. We haven't seen a return of Donald Trump, Miley Yiannopoulos, Alex Jones, Project Veritas, which is what kicked all of this off to start with. And so instead, of what do we get? Elon has suggested establishing a board to review all previous permanent bans. That's not going to do anything. They're like, that's not going to do anything for us. He is still getting advice from the same organizations that were basically advising, you know, that advise every, every other big tech company. And so people like Tim Pool doesn't have much faith in, in the man. Um, Tim Pool's an important guy. He's the one that sat down with the former um, CEO of um, Twitter, Jack Dorsey, and Vijaya Gotte. She got fired recently by Elon Musk on the Joe Rogan podcast. And it was Tim Pool that was holding the, Elon, um, the Twitter executive's feet to the fire. And so Tim's got a lot of clout when it comes to this, and he calls it as it is with this particular topic. So I'm not happy with what uh, what's going on there. I think you know Elon's uh, he's just looking at this purely as a financial thing now. I, I don't think that he's shown sufficient commitment to free speech on the platform. Um, he's just dragging his feet on it. And so I think what's going to happen is we're going to see a situation where nothing really gets done. And so look, um, I've jumped over to Getter. I think um, when Nigel Farage was here, I asked him about Getter, and I said, "What do you think about you know in terms of how serious it is?" And he told me that look. I think it's the most serious one alternative platform we've got. There's money behind it. There's a lot of, um, they've, got a, they've established a structure in, at Getter. They, so I'm jumping over there. I've already moved all my um, followers over there, especially from Twitter. There is a cross-posting feature, so I can cross-post from uh, Getter to Twitter. And very soon I'll start, be, start doing some lives over there because I'm just sick of getting censored here. I mean, you guys see 400 people listening live right now on Facebook. And if you guys all give it a share, it'll go really far. But on Getter, I'm not being censored as I am on here. I mean, I used to be able to reach 3,000 people on, on Facebook here. Um, in other news, um, big news out of America, with censorship, and this is a good pivot, the Depl Department of Homeland Security in America has been censoring information on big tech, basically. And they've been co coordinating with big tech to censor 
your, your free speech, whether it be on, to- on the topic of Ukraine, distrusting in the banking institutions, the pandemic information, who knows, Afghanistan, they, they, they keep talking about um, censorship and saying it's not happening. Well, Facebook, there was a big um, DHS leak, a, a Department of Homeland Security leak the other day. And this is why I've got to give it to you guys now. This leak showed that there is an actual portal for government employees, basically, or a specific segment of, gov- of the government, of um, Department of Homeland Security. There's a platform. There is a, a, like a, a special site that Facebook has made for them to actually deplatform things, even manually. And it's absolutely insane what's going on. I mean, this, is, this is insane. I mean, literally, you go to this portal... And Tim Pool covered this a bit more in depth. You go to this portal if you're a part of the Department of Homeland Security in this very specific area, and you actually can deplatform and downrank certain, certain, certain content. I mean, this is insane. I mean, you, guys, if you think this is as shocking as I am, you know, I'm clearly I'm I'm struggling to find the words to articulate it. I hate censorship. We knew they were they were coordinating. We knew it, and now this leak just proves it. So look. Um, that's the, in summary, that's what's going on. Um, there's so many things that's going on. I just had to break it down for you guys in a very quick live. In other news, there was also, um, a story today about a cyclist that, uh, got in a car crash with, um, uh, Dan Andrews. Dan Andrews was, or, or him and him or his wife was speeding and uh, hit this cyclist and the cyclist almost died. And so that's, that's been what's been happening in Victoria. Absolutely mad. And you know what? I'm looking at all of this. I'm looking at what's going on in WA, how they need members. I'm looking at all the projects we're doing for Victoria, all this news that needs to be covered. And the big message that's just blaring in my face is, you know, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I mean, we have so much work to do. There's there's so much going on. And I just, I'm looking around. I'm like, guys, this is too much. This is, this is just too much. You know, I'm... Uh, me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm barely sleeping. The amount, the amount of work that needs to be done just for the Victoria election, let alone covering these stories, I have to do it as efficiently as possible. I mean, this is a sloppy job. The, these um, seven topics in this live that I've just talked to you guys about, very sloppy job by me. Normally, I love giving you graphics and here and there. I've just got to give it to you as it is because there is that much going on. Where, no wonder... Australians aren't able to keep track of what's going on. They're so busy with work and everything. So please give this a share. Get it out there. We need people to be aware of these things going on, especially, I mean, God, Alan Jones breaking this story about in the budget paper to page 17, tax deductible status to an Aboriginal organization that is going to be fighting for, you know, a voice to the parliament. That, that's insane. And the other point on that is this organization called Australians for Indigenous Constitutional Recognition, they're getting tax deductible status, but we're not seeing other organizations on the no side of the campaign get it. One thing that Alan Jones said in that segment was that in the referendum for um, whether we wanted to become a republic or not, a couple decades ago, um, the Republicans lost. um, John Howard provided adequate funding to both sides equally so that the democratic process could, could win out. But... That's not what's going on this time. You know, where we're seeing the Labor government put their thumb on the scale. You know, uh, guys, give this a share. Get it out there. People need to know about this stuff. So kudos to Alan. Kudos to ADH TV. Kudos to, to Getter for, for actually putting their money where their mouth is and establishing something that's rock solid. I love Getter. It's an excellent platform. I'm going to be posting more things on there. And, you know, kudos to the people in WA, those parties that are about to be deregistered. If you're in WA... Get it out there. Let them know that if you're in WA and you're not a member of a political party, become a member of a political party. There's so many different parties. They're about to be deregistered if we don't get people signed up. And if we don't get members of parties over there, then how are you going to beat Mark McGowan in the, in the election in 2025? I know it's far off. I know you're all thinking, oh, no, this, you know, we've still got the US election and this and that between now and then. No, 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 no. These parties will be deregistered in WA if you don't go and sign up. So go to your favorite freedom party if you're in WA, sign up to, you know, whichever party's there. I don't want to rattle them all off. I know One Nation is over there. I'm sorry the other parties that are over there. I mean, maybe the UAP's there, maybe the Liberal Democrats are there. I'm not sure. 
Um, maybe the Australian Christians are there, shooters, farmers, fishers. Go look, go look it up. Ask them, hey, you know, do I need to be signed up? Because what happened was, this is, this is exactly what happened. I didn't explain it before. Mark McGowan, the, the absolute tyrant in WA, what he's done is he covertly, at 1 a.m. in the morning a couple nights ago, he passed legislation restricting parties, making it a lot more difficult for them to be verified. So now what every single member of the political party has to do, they have to have at least, I think, 300 forms submitted accurately out of the 500. They have to have a signature and all of the um, voters' details, the members' details, and it has to correlate 100% with the way they vote on with, with their voting record as, as a voter. Now, if it's even slightly out, it's out. So it's this is insane. Um, the, there's, the, I, there's reports from One, One Nation sort of rang the bell today. They called me up today in a bit of a panic. And um, they've, they've just like, we can't reach our members. Our emails are down. We're trying to get these, these forms in, but we're just being subverted. And so I don't know if they're getting hacked. I don't know what's going on. And so if you've, whichever party you're, you're a fan of over in WA, go make contact with them. Ask them if they need you to send a form in. Um, but other than that, guys, it's insane. This is getting insane. Victoria's going well um, with the campaign. Um, the volunteer funnel's going well. The policy matrix is um, almost done. I mean, I've got, I've got it right here. I'm, just, I'm looking forward to putting it out probably on Sunday. Friday and Saturday's pretty crap with the algorithm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I've got a few more election graphics coming up. But how to vote cards come along well. Uh, the mystery project, you, oh, you guys are going to love it. You guys are going to love it so much. I'm, I'm coming out with more information on it early next week. But um, I'm going to cut it there. You guys have a great night. There's almost 400 of you listening live right now. Give this a share. I'm, I mean it. Like 350 shares, that translates into tens of thousands of views. Tens of thousands. This week, we had a number of videos go viral because you guys shared them out. I'm not particularly brilliant. You guys see some, some truth. You share it out there, and that's what makes it go gangbusters. One of the, um, I, I was quite humbled. There was a video a couple days ago I did on Hillary Clinton. Some of you may have seen it. It reached over 120,000 people, a lot, a lot of which are American. And I'm so humbled by that because I just, I'm just a dude in Australia that, that enjoys following US politics and learn some stuff there so that I can apply it to Australia. But I mean, I was so humbled to see that Americans are tuning in and finding value in it. Um, and so look, thank you guys so much. It wouldn't have reached the Americans if you guys hadn't shared it out. And um, you guys are just, you guys are just very encouraging to me. So um, that's the latest. I'll give you another update in the coming days. I prefer not to do these things live where I just give it to you like that. I feel like I'm just taking a big dump and just being like, yeah, this is all the thing that's going on. I prefer to, to process it for you, give you some images, give you, you know, break it down for you, make it a bit more sequential and, you know, um, prim and proper. But um, I'm in a singlet. It's in the middle of the night. I'm on three hours sleep. I've been on three hours sleep for the last few days um, because this is important and there's a lot of work to do. And as I said before, <laughs> the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. I'll see you guys later.